My name is Ina Braverman. I'm the co-founder of EcoWave Power. I want to start with a non-traditional question. How many of you ever visited inside of a wave energy power station? Raise your hand. One. Oh, somebody's unique. You're the only one. OK, I'll ask you a different question, a weirder one. How many of you ever played Texas Hold'em poker? Ah, a lot. Almost everybody. So let's talk about Texas Hold'em poker. So uh, one day I couldn't sleep at night, so I went online and I googled what is the worst starting hand in Texas Hold'em poker. It came out that it's a two and a seven. The beginning of Echo Wave Power was also a two and a seven. Nobody wanted to hear about wave power. Everybody said it's an industry that is too expensive, it's too difficult. Banks, investment companies, engineering companies all spend millions and billions of dollars in the development of wave energy, and they couldn't make it. On top of everything, when we established, when David Lab and I established Eco Wave Power, uh, I was only 24 years old, which is much younger than my uh, peers from the energy industry. I was a female in a mostly male-dominated uh, kind of industry. And on top of everything, I didn't have any engineering background. I studied uh, political science and English language and literature. And as you all know, Shakespeare is nice, but it cannot help you with power stations. So, as I said, I had a two and a seven, and most of the people would fold these kind of cards when they're beginning to play uh, Texas Hold'em, but I decided to keep playing. So I decided to keep playing not only because I relied on my luck, but because I knew some things about wave energy that made it very attractive. First of all, as you can see here, two-thirds of the world population are currently living on the coastline. With this kind of population distribution, the need for wave energy becomes inevitable. Other than that, wave energy, wave energy is 800 times more dense than air, which means you can produce much larger electricity amounts with much smaller devices. On top of everything, as opposed to other renewable energy sources that we all know, like wind and solar, wave energy does not die at night. It can work around the clock. In solar, if there's cloud coverage, if there's pollution, or even if the night comes, you cannot produce any electricity. So how does our technology work? Basically, we designed uniquely shaped floaters that go up and down with the movement of the waves. They press the hydro cylinders, which sends biodegradable oil into land-located accumulators. The pressure that builds up in the accumulators is used to turn a hydro motor, which is turning a generator, and sending clean electricity to the grid. Only 10% of the cost of our system is in the water, whereas 90% is on land, just like a regular power station. The technology that we develop, what is unique in it, is that it's cost efficient. It, and it's so cost efficient because 90%, as I said, is on land, so you don't need specialized equipment uh, to be used in the sea. Other than that, it's very reliable. We actually have a patented storm protection mechanism. When the floaters go up above the water level upon an upcoming storm or sink down under the water level, and uh, when the storm passes, the floaters actually commence operation. Our system is the first wave energy system in the world that received 100% insurance, both in Israel and in Gibraltar, where we have our commercial scale power stations. And it's fully environmentally friendly, as opposed to other wave energy uh, power stations that received a lot of criticism for creating new presence by connecting to the ocean floor. Our system is only connecting to breakwaters, ports, marinas, and other types of existing structures. So what have we did so far? We actually started with the wave pool testing in the Hydromechanical Institute in Kiev, in Kiev, which was a very small system that is meant to test different floater shapes. Then we enlarged it to a larger scale power station of 10 kilowatts, which can provide electricity to about 10 households. And the latest power station that we opened, the first commercial one, is the one in Gibraltar of 100 kilowatts, which is 100 households, which will be expanded to 5 megawatts. 5 megawatts are 15% of all Gibraltar's electricity needs. We also received European Union regional funding for this development. At the moment, EcoWave Power, due to its progress, already holds 130 megawatts of projects in its pipeline, including in Mexico, Chile, China, India, Israel, and other locations. 
So I think that with the information that I told you about the market potential and about the simplicity of our technology, we started with poker, and at this point, I think we already have at least two pairs. We, have, we started with the two and a seven, now we have two pairs of two and a seven. Now, if the last card, if the river will open to be a seven, then we can have a full house. But what's the difference between wave energy and poker? In poker, we're solely dependent on luck. In wave energy, the last card is dependent only on us. We can make sure that wave energy has a full house, that we have a win in hand. So I'm here to tell you to support wave energy, to study wave energy, to invest in wave energy in order to make a good future for it. Wave energy is definitely worth your attention because actually, according to the World Energy Council, wave energy can produce twice the amount of electricity that the world produces now, which is a huge amount. And I would like to uh, finish my speech with a personal story. Actually, my passion with wave energy is not only from the size of the industry, it's not only because we have an amazing technology, it's not only because I know many things that other people knew before me. Actually, I was uh, born in 1986 in Ukraine, and two weeks after I was born, the Chernobyl nuclear reactor exploded. I'm sure some of you know about this disaster. It was the biggest nuclear disaster in mankind in, in terms of cost and casualties. And 95% of the newborn babies after the Chernobyl explosion were actually born with different types uh, of illnesses. And I was one of these babies. Actually, upon the explosion, I had respiratory arrest. I stopped breathing, and I suffered from a clinical death. Luckily, my mom, which was a nurse, approached my crib on time, and she gave me mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, and by doing so, saved my life. So I was a lucky baby, but others weren't as lucky as I was. And I got a second chance in life, so I'm definitely here to you to take it into good use. I want to do something good for the world and to develop wave energy, which will help our next generations. Thank you.